Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to take a closer look at the ground mapping radar of the F-18 Hornet and how to use it to bomb targets in extremely bad weather conditions like the one we are in right now. Our target is going to be a power plant on the Persian Gulf map. Here, this plant right here. I placed four infantry soldiers to mark my target area, which is this um, square with all the power lines in it. And I placed two um, workshops so I can actually see the area on the ground radar because all of these smaller buildings don't seem to be, sho be showing up on the ground mapping radar. So I need some other way to find them. So let's first of all set up the bombs for this mission. I am carrying 10 Mark 82 Snake Eyes. I will drop them in the auto mode with an instantaneous fuse, fuse and obviously the fins extended. I will drop all 10 bombs in one go with a distance between each bomb of 100, oh no, 125. So with that set up, now let's take a look at the radar screen. First of all, we need to know roughly what the area that we want to bomb or where the target is um, looks like. Um, in this case, we have this very distinct looking bay area. And that's what we are going to look for, for this large dock here and this dock area on this side. And when we look at the radar screen, we indeed can see this exact area, which is right around here. It's, it's after Quersham, which is this blob here. And yeah, so let's mark it on the map, or on the radar screen. And then let's wait a little until, until we get closer to the target. Um, uh, yeah, now you may ask, why are you flying not exactly at the target? Well, this is important for the expansion modes of the radar. These work by taking the returns and pretty much using the Doppler frequencies to f um, display the image on the ground. In the EXP3 mode, it goes even so far that the radar is using a synthetic aperture. Um, I'm gonna link a explanation on how SAR radars work down below, I think, when I don't forget about it. So, now the target is within our range ring. Let's zoom in and Get a little closer. Here's the large dock. Uh, I'm gonna place my mark radar marker slightly above it. Uh, let's get into the S EXP2. Here again, the large dock area. And here are the two smaller docks of the power plant. Right about here. Now let's go into the EXP3 mode, we should be close enough for it. Yep, within 30 miles. Alright, let me redo this. Now sometimes it tends to be really weird. You need to sometimes redo it. That also helps to replace the point, and hopefully it works now. Oh, looking good. Yeah, so... The radar picture in the EXP mode is going to be the best at a 45 degree angle to the side. We currently are around 11 degrees short of that. However, we can already see the two large warehouses that I placed down 
one here and one here. Um, DCS is, is, is a little weird in this regard that player or that mission placed objects show up better on the ground mapping radar compared to the static ma um, map objects like these um, generator buildings. However, when we get in a proper angle, these buildings will indeed also show up. So, we know that our target area is right between those warehouses. So I'm gonna put a marker down and we can also see the four generator buildings here. These four blobs. Those are these four buildings right about here. So yeah, we know that now that we are pretty much right on target. Now we, we are closing in on the coastline and this is all good because well we know everything is awesome. <laughs> okay, now let's let us actually turn in to the target. For that I, I'm just using the <coughs> heading select mode of the F18. Um, with future updates, this is not likely not going to be required because the F-18 will get a coupled mode that can navigate straight towards waypoints. And yeah, further looking at our target, we see that we're pretty much right on target. We are 14 miles out. Our bombs are readily set up. We may be a little high, uh, I'm gonna lower my flight level um, when I'm at the right angle. Or maybe, you know what, actually gonna go out of the autopilot mode and actually turn in fully myself by no control and help the airplane turn in okay. to accelerate the process a little and this mission I have very slight wind setup it's not extreme like the weather preset for thunderstorms But it's um, still enough wind to let shake the plane a little bit around to cause also some drift. Okay, in 43 seconds is going to be the bomb drop. Oh. Give us one degree more in this direction. I see the plane actually. Okay, 20 seconds, I'm gonna press down the pickle button, tell the plane, yeah, we can drop our bombs. And I try to keep our course right at the right spot. And bombs out. Let's take a look at where they are falling. I didn't lower my altitude. <laughs> Forgot about that. But they are only falling 2000 feet, so that's fine. So yeah, um Let's talk look at take a look at the damage. So the infantry that is close to the bomb impact is obviously running away in fear but yeah that's pretty much a perfect hit on target I hit the guy that was standing in this corner but um, all my bombs went well most of my bombs went inside of the square area as you see right here and well yeah I inside the cloud layer so I actually did not see anything that was below me if you look 
out. Yeah, that's close. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, this showcase. Um, obviously, using the ground radar is a little tricky, but it can be done quite easily with practice. And for that, I will also link this exact mission in the description down below, so you can practice um, radar bombing in bad weather with different airplanes. I have the um, Wigan and the Hornet in there, because that's the planes I know that I have a ground radar. And uh, I'm gonna add more planes when more planes are coming. For example, the A6 Intruder, that is going to be made by Hitler. And the A7, that is, I think Leatherneck makes it, the A7. Um, which also both both have a pretty capable air-to-ground radar by themselves. These planes even have the advantage of being able to create radar offset points. So for, when you, for example, have a known distance from a point and an angle, you can then take in this distance and that angle and put that um, as offset into your fire control system and just then select for example, this radar target right here. This makes overall bombing a little easier because then you don't have to guesstimate where things are. All in all, I hope you enjoyed my video and I hope you consider subscribing to the channel. We're gonna see us in the next one. Goodbye everybody.